Hello, we're back for chapter five. We're gonna find out what has Skunk been up to in Badger's house ever since when he returned, or I'm sorry, when he mailed out the letter to Aunt Lulu. We'll see what he's been up to by himself and why it's been so quiet in that house. So this is chapter five. Badger found the brownstone quiet on his return from mailing the letter. Skunk must be out, he thought. His stomach roared. He rushed to the kitchen. His left paw found the cereal cupboard while the right one pulled open the utensil drawer. The cereal box hit the counter. The spoon clattered beside it. The milk landed along with the bowl. Badger stood and ate. His spoon clinked the bowl, slid across the bottom, and rose to Badger's mouth. Clink, slide, slurp. Clink, slide, slurp. Eating ended as a cereal eating always did, with Badger holding an empty box. Shake, shake, shake. A cereal dust drained, or I'm sorry, rained onto the puddle of milk in his bowl. Words surfaced in Badger's mind. Cold cereal in a cold bowl with cold milk. Badger tapped his spoon against the side of the bowl in time with the words, cold cereal tap in a cold bowl, tap, tap, with cold milk, tap. Badger remembered the breakfast skunk had prepared for him. Breakfast hot chocolate, warm strawberry cinnamon muffins, eggs with roasted peppers. Mmm, he mumbled. He held his empty cereal box in front of him and read, Fruitio cereal, fortified with minerals and vitamins. Skunk was right. Minerals and vitamins did not sound tasty. Badger wrote, no more Fruitios on the refrigerator grocery list and decided he would go to bed early. On the way to his bedroom, Badger heard a sound coming from the old box room. The door was ajar. Badger pushed the door to peek in and inhaled sharply. In a spot of a lamplight, Skunk sat curdled in a green beanbag chair with an enormous book let open on his lap. Light from a reading lamp pooled on the book's pages. Across the room, moonlight streamed through the window onto a window seat lined with plump, mismatched pillows. The moon room, thought Badger. And here's a picture of him sitting there reading his book in the moonlight. Same right there. Skunk rubbed his eyes. Hello, Badger. You're here, Badger said in a not the nicest way. Then he realized he had not even knocked. Skunk did not even appear to notice. Yes, I am here. It is long story night. You sound like a polka when you eat cereal. Skunk held up a big book. Have you read this story? It's called Henry V. Henry V is a king with a short last name. I sound like a polka when I eat? Badger tried to look as if this did not bother him and stepped closer to read the big book's cover. It read Henry V by William Shakespeare. He shook his head. No, this isn't about rocks. Skunk scooted to the edge of the beanbag chair and sat upright. You should read this. Henry V is about two kings who are in a battle. It is an upsetting story, but a good one for a long story night. And King Henry says interesting things. For instance, King Henry says that the fastest way to win a kingdom is by being kind and gentle instead of using violence and cruelty. Do you think that's true? I do not know what I think at all. I'm not even sure I even trust Henry V. He is a king. He got everybody into a battle. Battles are not gentle and kind, but I would like to know what you think. What do you think, Badger? Skunk waited. Uh, hmm, Badger muttered. He was not used to this kind of question, especially at night after eating an entire box of cereal. Skunk ran his claw down the page and tapped. He actually says this. With leniency and cruelty play for a kingdom, the gentler gamester is the soonest winner. Does that help? Skunk looked up and waited. Huh? said Badger. He thought about it one way and then another, and his thoughts dear ended, so he backed them out and tried another direction. Maybe? I hope so. Skunk sighed and nodded. Yes, hope seems right to me. Gentle and kind is the way I would like the world to be. I hope it will be that way. But Badger, if it were true that kindness and gentleness were the best way to win a kingdom or win anything at all, wouldn't everyone do it? Not everyone is gentle and kind. Even I myself find it hard to be gentle and kind. Sometimes I get mad. Also, I am a small animal and being small is difficult. Sometimes I wish I had a grizzly bear arm to swat or an alligator mouth to clack, but instead I'm a skunk. He looked at his tail. Even when no one is hurt, you get chased out of town and that does not feel like you are the soonest winner.
Badger looked at Skunk's tail with some alarm. You do not use that uh, willy-nilly. Of course, no, of course not. I would only spray in the direst of circumstances, Skunk smiled. Thank you, Badger. It helped to talk. He put his paw on the book and closed it. Did you figure out your troublesome rock? Badger nodded. Tourmaline Pegamite. Oh, is that its name? Yes, said Badger with a chuckle. Well, then tomorrow I would like to hear the story of Tourmaline Pegamite, said Skunk. I have not heard a lot of rock stories. You would? Yes, I would, said Skunk. Rocks are close-lipped unlike oysters. Rocks do not speak much except for the rocks in the rock shaker. Those rocks chatter, 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 but that is because of the shaker. Also, I have not learned how to speak rock. Rock tumbler, corrected rock Badger with a smile on his lips. Tomorrow I will tell you a rock story. Good. Then Skunk opened his big book and began again to read. That night as Badger got into his pajamas and slipped into bed, he thought about Skunk and the letter he'd sent to Aunt Lulu. He had to admit that talking to Skunk had been an enjoyable way to end the evening. It would never work, but Skunk certainly had his moments. Head on the pillow with his eyes shut, Badger replayed the sound he had made while eating cereal. Clink, clank, slurp. Clink, clank, slurp. And laughed, ha! I do sound like a polka. With a smile on his face, Badger fell asleep. The next morning, Badger awoke to a yell. Onion and mushroom omelets, warm rhubarb muffins, breakfast hot chocolate coming soon. Breakfast hot chocolate, mumbled Badger. He rolled out of bed, stepped free of the covers, and bounded down the stairs. Skunk's second breakfast was as delicious as the first one. Mmm-hmm-hmm, -hmm, mumbled Badger as he chewed. Badger wrapped his paws around the last rhubarb muffin and offered to do the dishes. Skunk stopped cold. Are you sure? Dirty dishes make you mad. You clean, I cook. Cook, isn't that I? You cook, I clean. Isn't that the deal, said Badger, ignoring the look Skunk was giving him. Skunk peered at him. It is a big job to make breakfast. It is fair, but there are a lot of dishes. Skunk gestured at the countertop, countertop with an egg-covered whisk. The words teetering, heaped, and glop came to mind. And also Badger noticed that Rocket Potato remained in Rocket Potato Corner. But none of this Badger, Badger, none of this bothered Badger one whit. The letter had been mailed. What was done was done. Would it hurt him to clean the kitchen a couple more times? Badger shrugged casually. It's only fair. Skunk looked at Badger sideways, blinked, and then nodded. Okay, but I will help. It is easier if someone dries. You will? I will. So Badger washed and Skunk dried. They talked about things Skunk liked, like good storybooks, a farmer's market he found, and spoken in a hush, the Milky Way. They talked about things Badger liked, rocks, minerals, um, gas bubbles in a volcano, lava bubbles, said Skunk, um, with the hop, er, not exactly, said Badger. But then Skunk began to pace back and forth. He twiddled spoons and forks. He flicked his dish towel against the kitchen cabinets. He took a long look at Badger, opened his mouth, and closed again. Finally, he said, Badger? The bull badger had slip, held, slipped from his paw, splashed into the soapy water, and clunked, sludge and slurry. What? Skunk swatted the floor with his towel and sat in a burst. Sometimes I get excited and I do things. He looked up. Badger, I am sorry about your box room. I should have asked you before I stomped on the boxes. I did think I was helping, and empty boxes remind me of bubble wrap. I never thought that maybe you liked your boxes puffy, and I'm sorry. It's okay, said Badger. Skunk crossed his arms. You were mad? I know I am right about that. Badger tried to remember how he felt before he sent the letter to Aunt Lulu. He frowned and remembered, yes, I was mad, but now I'm not mad. Well, that is good news, said Skunk. And then Skunk pointed a claw at Badger. You said you remembered Aunt Lulu mentioning me, but it did not seem like you expected a skunk. It seemed like I was a shock. Is that true? Badger sagged against the sink with a little smile. I hadn't really read Aunt Lulu's letters. You said... I know I did. You did not know I was coming? Badger shook his head. I did not know you were coming. Well, that explains everything, said Skunk. You should read Aunt Lulu's letter. I will. Believe me. Ha! Har! Skunk plunked his fork and they got back to work cleaning the kitchen. Kitchen clean and successful morning rock work done. No interruptions. Rock identified. Finished early. Badger joined Skunk for lunch. 
You know, said Skunk, poking the air with a pickled asparagus spear, it is quite chickmapolitan here. I have seen a blue-booted bantam, two silkies, three javas, walking with a koshamo, and lots of chickens I did not even know. I met chickens from South America, real travelers. You are lucky to live here. The chickens said they did not know you, but you are probably tolerable as a roommate. They are hoping that if I am your roommate, you will turn off the rock shaker. They think I will not, I will not like the rock shaker. Badger, the rock shaker is loud. Tumbler, Badger corrected, it is loud. Yes, he scraped at his baked potato, making sure to get some olives and sun-dried tomatoes, and then he frowned, the chickens call me tolerable? Skunk chewed his asparagus spear and swallowed. With chickens, tolerable's good. Chickens get a lot of trouble. You will like the chickens. So down to earth. Oh, and by the way, did you meet a chicken? A Dominicer said she startled you. She said you were one of those animals that did not expect chickens to speak. Badger thought back to the gray and white speckled chicken he had seen two days ago. Was he really supposed to say, balk? Skunk leaned over the, ch the table. Would you like to meet the chickens? Yes, said Badger, and he realized he meant it. Skunk clapped his paws. Good, 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 good. Now, said Skunk, tell me the story of the touring pegmatic rock. Tourmaline pegmite begins with fire, lava, and magma deep inside our earth, Badger began. Fire, lava, magma, so repeated Skunk. He leaned his chin on a paw, took a bit of a biscuit, and listened. Afterwards, Skunk asked Badger to show him on a map, so they cleared the kitchen table, and Badger spread out one of his geological survey maps. Side by side, Skunk on a chair, Badger beside the chair, they leaned over the map. Badger told Skunk how he used maps on rock-finding expeditions. Skunk gasped, rock-finding expedition? What is that? Badger explained about how he camped out. Under the stars, interrupted Skunk. Technically, yes. With the picnic every day, interrupted Skunk again. I guess I do eat outside. Skunk hopped from one foot to another. What else? What else? So Badger explained how clues in the landscape led to a particular rock. <gasps> like X marks the spot. Sort of, yes. And then Skunk turned and said, Badger, what are we waiting for? Ha! Huh laughed Badger because that's exactly how he felt. That afternoon, Skunk set off to explore North Twist and Badger did the lunch dishes. Badger didn't mind doing the dishes by himself. He had a terrific day. Badger even smiled at Rock and Potato, which he left cradled in Rock and Potato Corner. Suddenly, Badger remembered the letter he had sent out to Aunt Lulu. He stood frozen in the middle of the kitchen floor and thought he thought for one second, for two seconds, for three seconds. Finally, Badger snapped himself out of it. Surely it is for the best. How could this living arrangement ever work out? When the kitchen was clear, Badger took the latest copy of Rockhound Weekly up to his bedroom. He would see if one of his rock discoveries had made it into print. Several hours later, Badger awoke with his face smashed on top of his weekly. He sat up, folded the newspaper, set it in on his desk. Two of his rock discoveries had been written up. He planned to clip the articles out and store them in a publication file. Then Badger realized it was quiet, very quiet. He went downstairs to investigate. Skunk was not in the kitchen. Instead, Badger found a note on the table, and it read, Badger, I will be back after dinner. Do not go anywhere tonight. There will be a surprise, said Skunk. A surprise? Badger read it again. Yeah, it said surprise. Badger's eyes widened, and he read the note a third time. Oh, wiping his eyes with his back of his paw. It had been a long, long time since someone had a surprise for him. Badger left a sharp ping. Maybe I should not have written that letter, but there was a surprise coming, so Badger pushed it aside. A surprise? Well, he couldn't wait. All right, that is part five and chapter five of Skunk and Badger. We will be back again for another session. Take a break, enjoy, and come back with me in a little bit. Take care. Bye.